Valheim is kind of a hard game at times, especially for new players. And I remember my early days of Valheim and some terrible cringy mistakes that cost me a lot of time and effort to fix. So I decided to make this video to help new players remember certain mechanics and avoid certain mistakes when starting out in Valheim. Enough waffle, let's get into this. Tip number one, sea serpents only spawn if it's raining or at night. I am what's called thalassophobic, and that means the ocean is scary. So when I started out, I was very, very apprehensive about the huge amount of sailing that can be involved in Valheim. And then people told me there were sea serpents. Let's just say I did a lot of procrastinating when it comes to sailing. But now, like a year later, I do know that they only spawn when it's raining or if it's nighttime. So if it's not raining and it's not nighttime, just relax. You're all good. There's no danger noodles. On the other hand though, Sea Serpent Stew is one of the best food items in the game, and the Serpent Scale Shield is a fantastic item to get, especially since it's resistant to pierce damage which makes it very, very helpful against Deathskeetos. So if you need yourself a bug proof riot shield, you'll want to hunt down some Serpent Scales. Oh, and you'll need iron to make that shield by the way. Now when I went out hunting for Sea Serpents, would you believe I didn't find any, and I spent several days sailing around, sleeping through the nights, absolutely baffled as to why I couldn't find the sea serpents. And obviously in hindsight, I know it's because they only spawn at night and in storms. You can use that tip to avoid sea serpents or to find sea serpents. That is up to you and it is not my problem. Tip number two is damage types. Do you guys watch Neebs Gaming? Did you see that part early on when three of the guys were trying to kill a skeleton with arrows? Wanna know why it took them such a long time despite it being a basic enemy and there being three of them? Well, the answer is damage types. Different enemies have different weaknesses and different weapons have different damage types. Now, there's a lot of damage types in Valheim, but the big three that you really need to know in your early day-to-day -day combat are Pierce, Slash, and Blunt. If you hover over a weapon, you can see the type of damage it does. For example, a wooden club does blunt damage, a flint spear does pierce, and swords do slash. And some weapons have combinations, like the porcupine club, which does pierce damage and blunt damage, or knives, which do slash and pierce. Now, Valheim has too many damage types and enemies to go over all of them and all of their weaknesses, but do remember, the Valheim wiki is free and very, very good. But here's the you should definitely know about. Slimes and skeletons, like the ones that Neebs were fighting, they are weak to blunt. So the Neebs gang should have been using clubs, because skeletons and slimes aren't particularly weak to pierce damage, which is what those bows were doing. Another important enemy that you should know the weakness of is trolls. Trolls can be very, very dangerous early on and can be some Valheim players' first death. But you should know that they are weak to pierce damage, which means using a bow and arrow is extremely effective on them. Especially if you can get yourself a sneak attack to the head, which is their weak spot, from far away. You could also use a knife or a spear if you're a bit of a lunatic, however, they are resistant to blunt, so definitely don't try and take them down with a club or hammer. You're not gonna outclub this guy. I mean, look at him. Now, currently, to my knowledge, there is nothing that is actually weak to slash damage. However, swords are cool, so I like them. And if your conventional weapons seem to not be doing much to certain enemies, you can always try fire. Fire does a lot of damage to most things. And again, you can use that wiki if you're in doubt. It has a full list of every enemy and what they're weak to and what they're resistant against. It's really, really helpful that that is there for this game. I have played other games in the past where the wiki is almost non-existent and it's very frustrating. Generally speaking, a club and a bow will serve you well throughout the game. Oh, and Bone Mass, the boss, he's weak to blunt. That'll help you a lot when you get to fight him. Number three hold on to your berries. Early on, you're going to get a lot of berries, and these are very, very useful later on. Now, don't worry, berries do respawn after five hours, so it's not like you're going to run out, but gathering them is really annoying. So I say just try and save them for later on when you need potions. They're not very good food items, but they are very good potion items. Deer meat, boar meat, and necktails are going to be very, very good for the early game. If you want some stamina, there is always honey. Once you're past the first boss, you can get your hands on carrots, and you can grow them in pretty big numbers to keep your food bar nice and happy. You should also get into making honey as soon as possible. You want to find a wild hive in a building out in the wild, shoot at it with a bow to stop yourself from getting poisoned by the bees, take the queen bee, Build a beehive at home, check it every now and then, and you'll get some honey. And if you get a bunch of these set up, you're going to have a lot of honey later on. 
Honey being another ingredient that's used in a lot of late game food and potion items, which is really annoying to gather if you don't start gathering it early on. Also, make sure to gather your dandelions, thistles, and mushrooms. They're going to be very useful later on in the game as well. And again, having to spend a few hours gathering all these things before a boss fight is just going to slow the game down to a crawl for you. So just stockpile these things for later. It's a lot easier. Number four, the environment really does not play around in this game. Some games don't really treat the environment like a threat. <clears throat> Seven days to die. <clears throat> so you may come into Valheim with no respect for Mother Nature. Pfft, wet, who cares? Cold, whatever. Not rested, get over it. Freezing, it's fine. It was not fine. If you open your inventory and press on the little raven, you'll see your active effects, and you'll see that if you're cold, you'll have 50% slower health regen, 25% slower stamina regen, and 25% less e e e magic. You have 25% less magic regen. You'll get cold at night if you don't have cold resist potions, or a cape that provides frost resistance, like the wolf cape or the lox cape. So, do your best to try and not take on any hard fights or explore in any dangerous areas until you have one of those. If you're wet, you'll lose 25% more health regen, 15% less stamina and magic regen, you'll be more resistant to fire, but you'll be weaker to frost and lightning. This in particular is an issue in the swamp, where it's almost always raining or just generally pretty moist. So if you get a little sodden, set up a campfire to dry off. Not being rested doesn't give you a debuff, but it may as well be considered a debuff to not have it because of how easy it is to be rested. Resting at a fire will give you the rested buff, which gives you 100% more stamina and magic regen and 50% more health regen. All you need is a campfire and for it to not be raining, and you can just sit down next to it for like 20 seconds, so don't miss out on that absolutely amazing huge buff that costs you almost nothing to keep maintained. And freezing just kills you slowly. You'll freeze if you go into the mountains without a good cape or a freeze resist potion. You can also use campfires to warm yourself up enough to keep you alive, but it's not exactly the best strategy for exploring the mountains. So with all that in mind, don't find yourself out at night, in the rain, without rest, or you'll get run down and murdered very, very easily. Tip number five is to tame and breed pigs. Do your best Age of Empires 2 villager impression and kite a pig into a nice little pen and block it in. Go and get yourself another pig, bring it back, get them both in the same pen, and then block it back off. Give them at least three food each, I usually go with like five just to be sure. Step away from the pen so that they're not aggroed by your presence, because the pigs won't tame if they're spooked, so you'll need to stay away from them, keep enemies away from them, and keep fire away from them. As for their food, you can drop them berries, carrots, mushrooms, turnips, basically any fruit or veg is fine, and they'll eat it just fine. Also, the pigs have to be within 10 meters of the food, so keep your taming pen relatively small and it's a good idea to stay within visual distance of them to keep them loaded in and try not to sleep because that sometimes makes the food despawn. After 30 minutes, you'll have two tamed boar. If you give them some more food, they can start breeding when they're hungry. It's worth noting that you can just drop a stack of the food item into their pen. You don't have to separate it out. They will just go over and eat one out of the stack. These pigs are very polite and they do not over engorge in food, which is strange because I feel like that's the one thing pigs are known for. But whatever, it's a video game. Now, keep in mind that pigs will only breed if there is less than five pigs within a 10 meter radius of each other. So if you want a big stock of pigs you can come back and slaughter later, you might want to breed some, move them out, you can just kind of run into them and they'll slide along, and you can keep them away from your breeders. Now breeding is kind of complicated, but the short version is throw a stack of food in there and come back in like an hour and you'll have more pigs. Now if you have a big stock of pigs available, you can craft a butcher's knife with tin, which will one hit kill your tamed pigs. And boom, just like that, you have infinite, easy leather scraps and boar meat. Boar meat is used in a lot of different foods throughout the game, so do yourself a favour and just keep that pig farm going. Leather scraps are also nice to just have a lot extra of. Also, if you can find a one or two star pig, definitely try and use that for breeding, because they drop more materials when you kill them, and they will pass along their stars to any of their offspring, which means more meat and leather for you. Number six, parry, block, and dodge. Use these features, they will save you. As a good rule of thumb, if an enemy does a small amount of damage, you wanna time your block to the last second. This is gonna stagger them, 
and while they're staggered, they'll take a lot more damage on their next hit. So if they're not extremely high damage enemies, use your free hand or a buckler, parry the attack and then follow up with a devastating attack. If the enemy does a lot of damage to the point where it just pretty much overpowers your parry or doing a parry costs you too much health, then it's time to use a real shield. I would recommend any of the tower shields in the game. Tower shields will not let you parry at all, they have insane block armour and in a lot of cases they'll just eat any damage they take, allowing you to survive much much more. If the enemy does so much damage though that it blasts through even a tower shield, then it's time to learn to dodge. Press the block button and space at the same time and you will roll out of the way depending on which way you're moving. This is a really good way to get up close and personal with large enemies like trolls which often just smash right through shields. Dodging takes more stamina than blocking though, but it will make you briefly immune to damage. But they are quite hard to time right, so knowing when and how to use them is one of the biggest factors in whether or not you'll survive or die in an encounter. Remember, if it's a weaker enemy, parry to do more damage, preferably with a buckler. If it's stronger, block with a tower shield to absorb the hits. And if it's completely unblockable or just really strong, dodge it, but watch the stamina and cliffs. And number seven, do not neglect potions, or I think this game actually calls them meads, but whatever. If you're going to the swamp, make a poison resist potion. No more deaths from poison slimes. If you're going to the mountains, make yourself a frost resist potion. You don't have to worry about the environment freezing you. If you're going into a hard dungeon or a boss fight, bring some health and stamina potions. Now to make these, you're going to need two main things. You're going to need a cauldron, which you'll need tin to unlock, which will teach you how to make the mead bases, which will require a variety of items to craft. And then you'll need a fermenter which you'll need some fine wood, some bronze, and some resin to craft. Put a meat base into the fermenter and come back in two in-game days, and it will give you six bottles of whatever potion you were making. Keep some of those on your hotbar and they will save you. Taking some poison resistance potions into bone mass will make it comically easy. Taking fire resist wine into the Yaglith boss fight will make it much, much easier. Trust me, you want some of that for that fight. Do not neglect your potions and remember to use that honey, berries, dandelions, this is where your stockpiles of those are really going to pay off. So that was 7 things I wish I knew when starting out in Valheim. Do you have any tips for new players? Let me know down in the comments. Thank you to my channel members and patrons for making this video possible. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.